my thought on life was that life is one achievement after another. I worked hard and did well in school, which was achieving well, which led me to a good university, like you said, which led me to a great place like Singapore. And every stage I was happy and I thought this is what life is. I went to a new company, I started businesses and I was doing well. And then out of nowhere in 2013, I had a huge tragedy. So I lost people who were close to me. Mm. And I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that was a, a huge loss. And that then kind of just shook me up. And during the healing process, as I was getting back to life, I started questioning that, is this what life is? Is it like, is this what happiness is? Mm. Is this what life is one achievement after the other? And I went on a journey to figure out what really is happiness? because something out of nowhere can hit you and then... And then all those achievements and money and success suddenly doesn't make you happy doesn't, anymore. It doesn't make you happy yeah. anymore. And as I spoke to other people who looked successful, who looked to have it all in place, I realized they had a deeper conversation with me and I realized not everyone is happy. They might look it, but there's something beyond achievement that makes you happy. So I went on a journey in spirituality. I was never spiritual, I was never religious. Mm -hmm. So I started embracing and seeing what was there philosophy, psychology, I read a lot to figure out what really does it take to be happy? Like, how should we live our life? And all schools had different teachings, but one clear thought that was there everywhere was the path to happiness is deep inside. You know what it is, but there are these noises that distract you, that expectations from others, expectations from parents, from society, from partners, from relationships, because of which you start going one mm -hmm. achievement after the other. And at some stage it catches up with you and you realize, damn, I've been like climbing the wrong ladder. There's other things to life. And that's what opened me up to this, that what is this deep thing? How can we access it? What How can age we know? you were when that happened? Um, so 2013, I was 36, 37. Okay, because it's also like, you know, a significant age to realize that you might be climbing the wrong ladder. A I midlife mean, crisis. Right? Midlife yes. crisis, exactly. Yes. I mean, yes. by that time, a you would point. spend a lot of time learning yes. and studying and creating your network and building your career yes. only yes. to realize it's not where you want to go. Yes. Not an easy place to be. Yes. No, absolutely. And I guess it would have happened later if not then, but events yeah. made it happen at that point and events made it happen in such a deep way that I had to go and figure it out in, in, in this way. But I think it could have happened later. And having said that, there's, in my view, initially I felt that this achievement mindset of going after goals is, is bad, money is bad. But as I went through it and I realized there's nothing good or bad, it's okay. It helped me get to where I want to get. But there is more to life and it's being conscious. I, I know you talked about consciousness. It's being conscious on the path that you're going after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe at some stage you want to accelerate and go forward in life. And yes, by all means, go to it, but do it consciously. And maybe at some stage you want to live a holistic life. You want to deepen bonds. You want to understand your potential and fulfill it. You want mm -hmm. to make a bigger impact and do that. But these are two or three options available to you and being conscious and aware about it is what leads to fulfillment and meaning. I love that. And you know, it's also very interesting often when people talk about success, as you said, so at the beginning, especially in this part of the world, it's yes. just conditioning also from the society yes. and the family that you have to be successful in a very particular way how people yes. traditionally were perceived to be yes. successful, yes. which is a lot to do with the money and status yes. and power. And then it was interesting for me to watch this, the whole wave of society went first through this. And then people like, no, it doesn't bring us happiness. We don't want any of that. And then people go into spirituality only to realize everything is important. And it's like what you said, it's not, uh, even if you look at the like ancient texts, no one ever, no master ever said, don't have money. They all said, don't be attached to money. And there's the big difference between the two. So, and I think in fact that people who are actually more conscious and more aware and want to genuinely do like a better things for the society, if those people have more money, then we're all in a better place, right? Because then, then they spend in a better way for the right courses. And so there's nothing wrong with businesses. Absolutely. There's a practical aspect, like you said, to money, which has a multiplier effect to many people who can live good lives and put food on the table for family. So that is important. And you touched on attachment and, and that reminded me of something. And I know you're a big fan of Buddhism as well. There's this book I read, Open to Desire. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read that. Phenomenal book where Buddhism does not say 
do not go after desire. Desire is there, but it talks about experiencing it with an open fist. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. If it goes, it goes. That's fine. Not with a closed fist that you clench onto it. I don't want this to go. I've got this car. I've got this money. I don't want it to go. And I found that visual very powerful that yes, enjoy good things in life. But if they go, there's impermanence. That's all right. That's okay. Accept it. And having that wisdom as we go along kind of takes you away from attachment and helps you enjoy the present moment. And that's pretty much what mindfulness, Buddhism and all things are. When I initially wanted to go down this path, I was trying to play low because I realized mm, fame, all these things are not good. But over a period of time, what would happen was when I would see my peers, they did not have this kind of realization. So they kept going up. And I thought now that I'm thinking about meaning of life and fulfillment, I should not get jealous, but I did get jealous. <laughs> I like your honesty. <laughs> I did get jealous. I said, wow, they're going up and up. And, and it kind of, and I then got upset with myself for getting jealous that, hey, I'm on another path. Why am I looking at these worldly things? Mm -hmm. So I had that journey. And through that journey, long story short, what emerged was that in whatever I do, if it's fulfillment, my desire to shine and do well and make a bigger impact is huge. And that's not something I should cut off by playing small. That does not mean fulfillment doesn't mean you play small. And I have the skill of going into corporates. I've done that. I've created mm -hmm. a business because around that. Because your background, right? My background is that. My business that I've created is also selling to corporates. So I know that. And I can make a difference. I know that people at work go through similar things that I've gone through. And I can make that difference out there. And why not go out and shine and do that? So once that realization came, then I decided to do it in a bigger way. I decided to go into companies. I decided to start a podcast. And I've been getting a huge amount of fulfillment doing that, where it's you are getting better and better because you're building that skill. And I'm using different things like creativity and earlier it was more analytical skills. But at the same time, you're shining and moving in ahead in life.